Hi and welcome to a little tour of this new machine. Yep, eBay sucked me in again, spat me out carrying a beige box. What can I say? I'm weak. Yeah, I was watching this on eBay and I was quite surprised that there wasn't more interest in it because I thought that's an awesome looking case if ever I saw one. And it's got a Cyrix processor, which, you know, they're interesting. I've never had one before, so I was curious about that. And the main thing that drew me to it was the guy had some screenshots which seemed to suggest this thing might have a fairly interesting graphics card. So we'll get to that in a moment. On the front, things are pretty standard. Got some expansion bays, uh, CD-ROM drive and the usual floppy drive. It's got quite a nice case badge, Enterprise Computers, which I guess were like a local outfit and that's a nice case badge, so I'm going to keep that one, I think. It's got this nice Cyrix processor, so I don't know whether they came with the processors when they supplied these sort of small computer manufacturers. All the usual buttons and keyboard locks. No LED display, but you wouldn't want one for this kind of machine. And then there's another kind of round space at the bottom, so I guess you could either have a, a round case badge there or a square case badge, which is what we've got up the top. So as usual, my desk is a pigsty, so let's make some space and spin the machine around and take a look at the back. The machine does have these crazy bolts on top, which have been drilled, and I'm going to take them out, but I don't really know what they were for. It was a shame, but I think I might fill it and possibly respray the outer case at some point. So we'll spin it round, and this case seriously weighs a ton. It's a serious chunk of metal. It's absolutely the heaviest computer I think I own. So it's all same old, same old here. It's clearly an AT case. We've got a power supply at the top. We've got some blanks where they've had their their parallel and serial ports at some point, but we've got them on expansion brackets now. So we've got the I.O. coming out there. We've got a graphics card, we've got a sound card, and we've got a modem. But enough of all of that cosmetic outside type rubbish. Let's get some screws out and crack it open and see what we've got inside. Yeah, once you get the cover off, and the cover's heavy enough, but you can you can see the frame and you can just tell that's a solid chunk of metal. That's why it's so heavy. And straight away you can see it's pretty dirty, so I'm going to take everything out and give it a clean. It's a busy old case. There's a lot of cables sort of coiled all over the place in there. Yeah, it's my favourite part of getting one of these old boxes is opening up for the first time. You kind of wonder who was in here last and when some of these components were last handled. You never know what you're going to find. Rat droppings, spider's nests, could be anything. And then eventually, it's a bit like Christmas, you take everything out and you're left with a nice little pile of goodies. And now arrayed before us, we have all the bits that were inside. We can start taking a look at what we've got. First up, a power supply from a company called LNX, not one that I'm familiar with, 200 watts, and it's not just a good power supply, it's a perfect power supply. So this thing has slots for both DRAM and, I guess, Edo RAM, and we're using the DRAM slots here. It came with a single module, which is PC100, and it's 32 megabytes. Drives are never that exciting. There were some early CD-ROM drives that were quite exciting, but we've got a boring old floppy from TIAC here, and then we've got a boring old CD drive from Samsung. And then we've got a hard disk drive, which I guess was you know the original one that this was made with. So it's a 3.2 gig quantum fireball. And the heart of the beast is this Cyrex 686 processor. It's a 686L, which means low power. They managed to reduce the core voltage on these models. I think they originally ran at something like 3.3 on the core and 3.5 on the I.O. side, but they reduced the core to 2.8 on this, so it runs cooler and more efficiently, and 3.3 on the I.O. side. The processor came out in 1997, and it was a bit of a failure story because they allocated most of their transistors to integer mathematics, and then suddenly you started getting games developers, most notably Quake at the time, that 
it almost entirely ran in the floating point units of other processors. So suddenly it found it couldn't run the latest and greatest game. So you could say that it fragged itself in the foot and misjudged where the market was going. But it's an interesting processor. I remember seeing Cyrix processors in the magazines, the overdrives and things. I was always curious about them and I've never had one. So I'm pleased to have this in my collection now. There's a modem which ain't much use now, but I'm going to leave it in the machine because, you know, it keeps it authentic. Sound cards and ESS audio drive, ISA card. So you know, it's not the best card in the world. It's a plug and play card, but it's a solid performer. Not the best, not the worst, but decent. So I'm quite happy with that. And for me, this is the cherry on the cake and the main reason why I bought this machine. It's an ATI Mac 32, a two megabyte version. So this is an early card for this machine, I would say. So it's 1992. It was fairly quickly superseded by the Mac 64, which is much more widely available and cheaper to get these days. Um, the Mac 32 seems quite rare now, quite hard to find and quite expensive. So I think just getting this card out of the machine makes the cost of the entire machine worth my investment and I'm very pleased to have it. It'll be interesting to see how it performs 2D wise when we pair it up with a Voodoo. Now all of these bits sit in a motherboard which is quite interesting as well. So this is an Alpina M537. She suspiciously shares a name with the PC chips M537. That's because they're the same motherboard and it seems that PC chips, when they ran out of manufacturing capacity, outsourced to a few companies, one of which was Alpina. So we have their version of the board here and I've seen, I don't know if it's true or not, that generally some of these outsourced boards were built to a much higher standard than the PC chips boards themselves. So it seems like a solid enough thing. It has an award BIOS dated 1995 and it uses the VX Pro chipset. So this was a chipset that was actually based on the VIA Apollo chipset. So I, I think they kind of licensed it out to PC chips who for some reason renamed it, but it is essentially just a, a VIA Apollo VP1 chipset, I think it is. ID and floppy controllers all built right into the board, so that's cool. We've got three ISA slots. There's four PCI slots. We've got four 72 pin SIM slots for Edo RAM in two banks. And then we've got two 168 pin DIMM slots for our SD RAM. It says it has 512 kilobytes of cache on the board, but there is word that on the PC chips version, this is one of those fake cache boards. So whether or not it's the same or whether Alpina had higher morals than PC chips, who knows? Let's see if we can have a look at that at some point. Been away, cleaned everything up. So motherboard's all shiny, case is all shiny. No dust left, hopefully. I'm bound to have missed a bit. But now we can just get it all put back together and then we'll give it a whirl and see how she plays.
And it's always that question. After you take a machine apart and you <laughs> give it a clean, it, will it work after you put it back together? So we'll give it a quick test and see what happens. Yeah, it's always a relief. So at least the machine was working again. So the next thing I want to do is try and put some more memory in this thing. So up that 32 megs to something a bit better. Now, I ran into all sorts of pain at this point, trying every stick of PC100 that I had, and some of them just simply wouldn't work. You would, It would register the correct amount of memory, then it would say it failed the memory count, and this went on. I went through all sorts of combinations. I've since found out that this particular chipset, this um, VX Pro chipset, can be fussy about the memory configuration. That is the chip configuration on the stick itself. So that probably had something to do with it. But I did eventually find two sticks of 64, so got it up to 128 megs, which I think is a decent amount for this machine. So there's only one thing left to do, and that's choose a Voodoo card to match up to that nice Mac 32 card that we've already got in there. So I've got two, and neither of them are in machines at the minute. So there's an Orchid Righteous 3D, and there's a Guillemot Maxi Gamer Voodoo card as well. So I think I'm going to go with the Orchid card just because it's got those mechanical relays that make a cool little popping noise as it warms up. So I think we'll stick that in there, and then we'll have some 3D as well. Now that we've got that in there, get the lid back on and then that should be it pretty much complete and then we can give it a go with some games. We're booting it up and having a quick look at the system. It was a pretty clean install of Windows 95. It appears that this thing was used by a veterinarian. So it was a business machine that a local vet probably used and there's lots of invoices and accounts and stuff on here potentially sensitive information back in the day I don't think it really matters now so I'm just literally the only thing that really needs doing on here is a couple of things need to be uninstalled like their printer drivers and stuff like that and there's just a load of documents so I'm just going to delete everything that's in there and that leaves a fairly clean install of Windows 95 with a nice version of Microsoft Office on there and also there's some cool stuff SciSoft Sandra is on here, the sort of benchmarking program that I remember using the light free version of quite often back in the day, so that might come in handy at some point as well. So all that remains now is to give it a go with the game and see what it looks like. So this thing wasn't obviously renowned for gaming with its weak floating point performance. I've chosen Wing Commander Prophecy because this is a pretty good game spec wise to push this machine a little bit. Wing Commander Prophecy wants, as its minimum, a Pentium 166, and you don't necessarily have to use a 3D card, but the recommended spec is a Pentium 200 MHz with a 4 MB card. Uh, it's a DirectX 5 game, which we don't really care about because even though the Voodoo supports DirectX 5, it also supports Glide, so we'll be playing it in Glide mode. But yeah, this thing is good because it wants a Pentium 200, and we've got the equivalent, so... I suspect because this is kind of a simulator game that floating point will be involved somewhere, so we'll see how it plays. Yeah, and while that's installing, I guess I better plug in a joystick, get ready to shoot some kill Rathi. Join us. Don't start, maniac. Now that you scrubs have figured out how to get here, let's engage our autopilots and get on with it. Fighters. Crap! Oh crap! Break 
Yeah, that felt quite hard to play. I don't know whether it might just be because I'm crap. <laughs> but I, I really seem to remember the last time I played this game, I didn't have this much trouble. I uh, can't remember what machine it was, Pentium 3 or something, I think I was playing it on. But this feels very juddery and very hard to control. It feels smooth enough when there's not much going on on the screen, but as soon as there's a sort of bunch of enemies on there and a lot of activity going on, it does seem to be very, very jerky and very, very hard to keep up with your target and not overshoot it or it disappears when you're lining up on it and things like that. I wonder if that's a floating point. So that's going to be an interesting thing to explore at some point in the future. Earlier on I did think about this, so I ran off and I have got a reasonable selection of 200 megahertz socket 7 chips to compare it with. So I think I'll definitely be back to visit this machine again at some point and run a proper comparison with some of the other chips that have better floating points and also MMX. I forgot to mention earlier this chip does not have the MMX instruction chipset so its closest equivalent would be a Pentium 200 non-MMX probably. But yeah I think at some point I'm going to come back to this machine and look a bit closer at the performance and also at some of the other hardware things like try and figure out whether we've got real cache or fake cache on the motherboard and that kind of thing so that'll be an interesting project for the future. So I guess that's about it. I think it's an interesting machine and I'm looking forward to having further adventures with it in the near future. So I hope you enjoyed taking a look at it with me in this video. And if you did, it'd be great if you consider giving me a thumbs up, leaving some comments below or subscribing. And thanks for watching. I hope to see you on the next video. Nice flight, Lieutenant. You're clear to land.